Well, it's Friday, so you know what time it is. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Weekend. Mm. Mm. Ah, excuse me. Hello, everyone. Britton here, also known as Samoki Dude. And today I'm back with a new video. First time I've done one of these in a while. So, if you guys remember, um, a few months back I did a video discussing books that I would be reviewing during, or not reviewing, books I would be reading during the summer, see if I could catch up on any of them, see if I can get my reading going. And I did manage to read a lot of those books, and I'm very proud of what I managed to do. And there were even some books that came along the way that I wasn't expecting. But now, since fall is approaching, and as a matter of fact, I think uh, the first day of fall is technically today as I'm recording this, but uh, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the books that I covered, um, that I read anyway, during this summer. So um, I have, now there are some of these I've already reviewed, so I might not talk about them too, too much. And I'll link their videos down below. Um, but yeah, this should be fun. So this is going to be basically all the books, all the comics that I covered during my summer read-along. Or, uh, read-a-thon, not read-along. Jeez. Let's dig in. So, first book I'm talking about today is one I already covered on the channel, and that is Red Seas Under Red Skies from Scott Lynch. And, um, a lot of people told me that this was a weaker book than The Lies of Locke Lamora. Well, I say poppycock to them, like I said before. Uh, because this book was really, really good, and I thought that um, it was a worthy successor to uh, The Lies of Locke Lamora. The prose is still great, the characters are still great. I mean, reading this book is like drinking a good glass of Mike's Hard Lemonade, who, uh, not sponsoring, but you know what it is. Mm. This book is really good, and I already did a review of it on my channel, so I won't talk too, too much about it. Um, but this was a really good book. And I really enjoyed myself when I when I read it. It was just as enjoyable as the first one, and um, and a worthy follow up to uh, Lies Lock Lamore. I do hope to get to the Republic of Thieves, not this next month because that's going to be my spoopathon. Which uh, video about that coming soon? But um, yeah, I'm talking about Red Seas Under Red Skies here, and um, I already covered it on my channel, so I won't say too much. But I really enjoyed it. I love the direction it took our main characters. And there's even a romance in here that I really, really, really liked. And I think you guys should check out. It's it's really great. So, Red Sea Under Red Sky. Uh, now, one of the books that I really wasn't expecting to get on here, but eventually just kind of came on. And I actually did a uh, read-along with my friend Jason. And that was uh, Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. Or, or uh, Ted Chang. I don't know how to pronounce it. I apologize. Um, but this was pretty good for the most part. It didn't blow me away like some other people said it did. Um, but some really good stories in here. Of course, the titular one that's on the title here. It's probably my favorite one. It was excellent. It combined that scientific speculation with the human condition. Um, I also really liked Hell is the Absence of God. That was a great story. Um, I have not done a review on this yet, but I thought this was pretty good. I didn't quite, it doesn't quite reach the levels of someone like Vandermeer for me, but um, I thought this book was pretty good, and it is not one that you should miss out on. Um, yeah, very good. Check it out. Give it a shot. Do all of that. Uh, next book I have here is Hollow by B. Catling, Brian Catling, the late Brian Catling. I read The Vore earlier this year, which I did a review for. You can go find that on my channel. Uh, and I read this. And this was a really interesting, and much like The Vore, this was a really interesting, strange, macabre book. It was really dark at times, and I really love the atmosphere of this book. It has this kind of dark, creepy, again, not to reuse too many phrases, but it's a very macabre book. And it's very much this surreal odyssey um, with these weird and strange characters. I'm actually hoping to have this on with... Uh, I'm actually hoping to have a discussion on this book with uh, Raph Blue Tax in a few weeks. Um, I don't know when I'll get that together, but hopefully we can do that soon. Mm. Should be good. 
should be good. Um, but um, I wouldn't say Hollow. Hollow didn't hit me in the same way that the Vore did, but it's certainly another interesting book from a well-needed uh, new voice in fantasy who unfortunately passed away uh, just this last year, around this time last year, actually. It's already been a year. Um, very, very sad, but I'm very sad that he's gone. But uh, another really interesting book from Brian Catling, and one I think you guys should check out. So I'll put that down here. Um, next book is a reread I did, and that was of No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy, because I got into a bit of a slump in July, and I decided that I was going to read, um, something familiar to try and get myself out of that funk, and this briefly did, and then I kind of went back to the slump because I started school the next, uh, month, but I'm out of it now, and I read No Country for Old Men again, and I already covered it on my channel, so, um... Yep, just as good as I remember it. Probably one of Cormac McCarthy's most accessible reads. It's definitely one, um, if you want to just pick it up and read it and have a good time, you could do that. Or if you want to read it for, like, a deeper experience, you can do that as well. Um, you can tell I got this as a used bookstore, because this is, like, the really old copy. But, um, it's pretty good. I enjoy it. Um... I mean, the movie is pitch perfect as well. I, I love the movie. The book is very good as well. Um, like I said, I already did a review, and it doesn't really need that much introduction, but No Country for Old Men. It's a good place to start. Uh, next book I'm going to be talking about is The Killer Inside Me from Jim Thompson. Uh, I covered this already on my channel, so again, I won't say too much, but this book really caught me by surprise. I mean, I definitely was expecting a character study into a twisted mind, but I definitely was not expecting the way that Jim Thompson did it. He does it in a very blunt, very unapologetic tone that I think is probably the most noir thing you could noir out of anything. And um, this is very old school noir, and it's almost shocking with what Jim Thompson got away with in this in this book because there's a lot of commentary on childhood trauma and sexual abuse and um, just abuse in general. Um, what creates somebody who is like our main character, uh, Lou Ford, who's basically like a uh, small town hick version of Dexter. Um, but yeah, Jim Thompson is a very good writer, I thought. Um, but this book really caught me by surprise. But um, it's definitely an interesting book. And uh, check it out. I thought it was really, really good. Uh, next book I'm going to be talking about is uh, Razor Blade Tears from S.A. Cosby. I read this in June. This was actually my last uh, June read. I actually blew through this pretty quickly. Another very good book from um, S.A. Cosby. I think he's a very talented writer. Um, there is some really, really great commentary about the nature of prejudice and how it's not just a race thing, that you can be prejudiced to... All sorts of different people. It doesn't necessarily have to be race. But, um... It also deals with a lot of themes of regret. And if you could go back and see what you could do. It's also a really cool revenge story as well. So if you like that, go on ahead and read it. But, um, I enjoyed Razor Blade Tears a lot. S.A. Cosby, man. He's a very good writer. Not, I wouldn't say he's quite up there with the Lahanes. And, um... I wouldn't say he's quite up there with the Lahanes yet, or the Lahans, uh, if Carlos watches this. Um, but he's certainly on his way, because uh, this book was fantastic. Um, oh yeah, I was going to mention Lansdale too, but you know, it doesn't matter now. But yeah, uh, Razor Blade Tears was very good. I thought it was um, a very good story. Uh, and uh, aside from a moment where I kind of predicted what was going to happen... Uh, again, I already I, I reviewed this, so I already kind of mentioned this, but there was a little moment where I guessed what was going to happen, but aside from that, I thought this book was fantastic. So, um, yeah, check it out. Give it a shot. Uh, next book I'm talking about is another book I covered on this channel already, and that is Gun with Occasional Music by Jonathan Lethem. This is my first Lethem novel. Um, fantastic book. It's a really fun combination of hard-boiled noir with, uh, this kind of, uh, Philip K. Dick weird zany sci-fi edge to it. 
Um, I thought it was really fun. Um, there's also a lot of commentary about our lack of communication with each other. Uh, again, I already did a review of this, and I already kind of covered this on here. But um, I thought it was a fun book. There's gangster kangaroos in here. There's babies with the intelligence of adults who are addicted to drugs in this. I mean, if that doesn't attract you to this book, I don't know what will. Next book I'm going to be talking about is probably my biggest disappointment of uh, not just this this summer, but this year, and that is uh, China Mieville's Embassy Town. Uh, another book I already covered on here, so I won't talk too much about what I didn't like, but um, another one of those science fiction books where the ideas kind of took uh, prescience, prescience over the story, and uh, that was very disappointing. And I'm so glad that I read Perdido Street Station over this book last year, because um, also, I was kind of in a funk when I read this, so that might have not helped things, but, um, I didn't, it, it, aside from some weird vibes that Mieville came up with, I, I just was not very impressed with this book. Not, you know, it's not a terrible book, and maybe I'll read it again at some point, but it's definitely an acquired taste, and I just wasn't, I wasn't the target audience. Um, but yeah, Embassy Town already did a review of it. Um, I was kind of sad because I wanted to like this book. And I definitely will be checking out more China Mieville at some point. It's just kind of, you know, yeah, not really. Uh, uh, this book just didn't cut it, and that's kind of sad. But, you know, we'll move on. Uh, next book I'm going to be covering, my second to last prose book, that is, is BAM! The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay from Michael Shaven. Uh, this book was fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed reading it. This is probably one of the most fun books I've read all year. And it deals with a subject that I'm very f intimately familiar with, and uh, that is comic books. I, I freaking love this book because not only is it a great story about a medium that I love, it's also a great story about these two guys trying to make it in a world that's much different than ours, uh, th much different than the one we have now. They have to deal with prejudice in many different forms. They have to deal with the fact that their chosen medium is not taken seriously, and they're trying to deal with the fact that they want to make serious art. And But at the same time, it's a very joyful read. It's a very, very lovely, it's just a lovely story, and I just, I feel a lot of warm emotions and and for when I, I talk about this book, this might be one of my favorites of the year so far. Um, Shaben's a fantastic writer, and um, I give him all the credit in the world. This is definitely, um, this is a lot better than Gentleman of the Road. And this book actually made me want to pick up uh, Gentleman of the Road again. And I do want to read more of his books. I'm hoping they are as good as The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. I will definitely be doing a review of this book at some point. I don't know when, but I'm definitely going to do it. Because, uh, man, this book is so good. And it's just, it's a beautiful story. And check it out. Really do. It's 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 a chunker, but don't let that scare you away. It's very accessible. You can have a good time. Even if you're not a diehard comic book nerd, you could get a kick out of this. It, it's very much a story. I mean, aside from the fact that I think that if this were real, the ending of this story would have been a lot worse than it is in this book. Um... But aside from that, this book is great. Uh, check it out. It's definitely worth your while. And, um, man, I, I can't wait to read this again when I, whenever I find the chance. Last book I'm going to be talking about is Best Served Cold from Lord Grimdark himself, Joe Abercrombie. Uh, I read this after I completed the First Law Trilogy. I was going to take a break from Joe Abercrombie for a while. And then they announced a freaking movie for this book specifically. And I was like, I guess I'll have to do this. So that's what I did. I picked up Best Served Cold, and I ended up reading it. And I mostly enjoyed it. It was pretty good. Um, I found that, like I said in some of my interviews that I've done, some of the podcasts I've done, and some other things I've talked to people on, um, the side characters in this I thought were much more interesting than the main one. But um, still has... Uh, Joe Abercrombie's gift with characterization and creating these really strange and vivid characters that I, I don't know how he does it, but he does, and uh, we all love him for it. And it's also just a fun revenge story. So if you really want to read Best Served Cold, 
uh, give it a shot. It's not, it's, it, you know, you, you can blow through it in a, about a week or two. It's not like, you know, Joe Abercrombie isn't really that difficult of a read, so there you go. Mm. So we got the books out of the way. Now I'm going to be talking about comics that I covered this month, and this is going to be uh, a very fun one because there a lot of, <laughs> admittedly, a lot of my comic reading this year has been me catching up with a lot of the um, the comics that I kind of fell behind on, and this should be fun to get into, so yeah, let's do it. Uh, first one I'm going to be doing is, of course, everyone's, basically everyone's favorite comic book series right now, and that is Saga from Brian K. Vaughn. My god, what, what can I say about this comic that has not been said already? The characters, the storytelling, the artwork, the world building, everything in this comic is just tipped to perfection or near perfection. So many memorable characters in this story. And it's a beautiful story about growing up in a really weird, messed up situation. And there's a lot of heartbreaking moments. There's a lot of heartwarming moments. There's a lot of moments that'll make you mad. It, it, Brian K. Vaughn, man. He's one of the best in the business for a reason. And Saga might be his crowning achievement as a comic book writer. And Fiona Staples, my god, it's so good. It's just, I mean, let me try and find the stuff that isn't explicit. <laughs> it's gonna be a little hard. Uh, let's see, let's see. Like like this, look look at that, look at this. It's, it's so good. Like, it's just, it, I, I love Saga. And a lot of people love Saga. And this is one of those series, the hype is freaking warranted. I, and I caught up with it. In that cliffhanger, I'm so glad that I waited till they came back to read that. Because I can see why a lot of people were really mad. That is all I will say about it. It just, oh man, it, it was, it's, it, it's not a, it, like, also what I like about Saga is that Brian K. Vaughn is not afraid to punish his characters. And uh, it makes us care for them. So, yeah, Saga. Read it. it, it if I could recommend one comic, uh, it would be very impossible for me to do it. But Saga would be on that list. It's just... It, it's so good. Check it out, guys. Uh, next comic I'm going to be talking about is Jeff Lemire's Bam! Black Hammer, which might be one of the best non-Big 2 superhero stories I have read since Invincible. I love the crap out of this comic series. It's it's a beautiful story and I love the the characters in this. Jeff Lemire, man, he like Brian K. Vaughn, Jeff Lemire can create when he's really on his A game, he can create these these beautiful well-realized characters who feel like real people. I mean, I almost called them people there cuz they feel so real even though that they were superheroes at one point. They still have the it's not quite the Watchmen. These are a bunch of broken people kind of venting out their trauma on the world. It's more of just like, you know, they're just people at the end of the day. These are, they're, and they're, it's, not, it's not a cynical take at all. It's a very, it's a very heartfelt, very beautiful piece of comic book storytelling. And I finally finished it, and there were some people who said the ending wasn't that great. I liked it personally. I thought it was very good. Um, this is another one I will definitely do a review on at some point because, man, it's it, it's warranted. Either that or I'll get, like, Carlos on here and we can talk about it because I know Carlos is a big fan of Black Hammer. Um, it's a fantastic read. Check it out. Another comic I caught up on was Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips' Criminal, which is uh, their first major collaboration together. A fantastic read on its own right. I really enjoy Coward is probably my favorite of the criminal volumes I've read so far, but I've enjoyed the other two that I've read so far, which is Lawless and The Dead and the Dying, I think, or The Dying and the Dead. I'm not, I, I'll have to check again on that, but, um, yeah, no, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips are one of, are one of those duos, kind of like Steve Dillon and Garth Ennis, or, um, like, oh, uh, let's see. Um, well, Steve Dillon and Garth Ennis are the first ones that kind of popped in my mind. Um, maybe Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. 
um, Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev. Th just those two guys who just work really well off of each other, and they just they know each other's style so well, and they complement each other's skills so well. Um, I did manage to get Jason to read Reckless, which I thought was very good, though I wouldn't say is one of their best work. I would say that would either be Criminal or The Fade Out. Both are excellent, excellent crime comics. I am glad I caught up with Criminal because uh, it is... Don't miss it. It's very good. And um, check it out. It's a really fun series. Uh, it combines that kind of gritty noir with that kind of fun, pulpy feel. Good stuff. It, it's definitely... It's like uh, Sin City, except with better artwork. But, you know, uh, you know, don't, don't assassinate me. Anyway, uh, moving on to another series I caught up on, and that is Descender from... Jeff Lemire and Dustin Wynn. Um, I, I have some interesting opinions on this. This isn't a bad series by any means. It's a uh, it, it's pretty good for what it is. I mean, there, I mean, I would definitely say Pluto is a better take on this concept. But um, this is very good. I mean, Jeff Lemire once again his his the way he creates these very interesting, real feeling characters. And, um, the artwork, oh my god, look, look, I mean, hold on, let me just screw around with this real quick, just, just look, look, look at that, look at this beautiful artwork, that Dustin Wynn, that dude should get more work in the comic book field, because, my god, this man, it's not fair how good he is, he's just, he's just, ugh, I, I can't even describe it, it's, it's just, he's one of those just really really gifted artist. I mean, look at this. Look at that. That's it, just... Jeff Lemire, man, he is so good at, at, like, getting artists. Like, he has a good eye for artists. Not a lot... Not much unlike the guy I will be talking about in a minute. But Descender is, is a very... is a very good series. So, yeah, give it a shot when you can. Uh, last comic I'm going to be talking about is from one of my favorites, and that is Robert Kirkman... Uh, Firepower, which is the series he did with Chris Samney, who, despite the fact I don't love his beloved run on Daredevil with Mark Wade, I do think is a very good artist, and man, does he shine in this, because, um, let me tell you, man, he's really good. He's a really talented artist. Um, you know, he's created some just really great dynamic images with that kind of cartoon feel I, I just I love I love his style so much it's it's such a good um it's it's so good and give it a shot like look at that oh, hold on look look at this look at that it's just it's beautiful it's beautiful I tell you um like just like look look at that look at this it's just I, I don't know how he does it and Robert Kirkman's another one of those guys his eye for artists is unbelievable. I mean, he's just... He's very good at picking them out. And this comic is no different. It's definitely not an original story. It's kind of his take on the Iron Fist, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, if you really like that. Um, it's kind of his take on that, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It definitely has that kind of Robert Kirkman fun level to it. And it's definitely a, a, a fun series so far. And I definitely do want to read more of it because, uh, man, I, I, Robert Kirkman, man, it's hard to beat him. And he's really good. So, yeah, firepower. Uh, I think that's all I got. Uh, my summer reading was a lot of fun aside from those couple months where I slumped pretty hard. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to say. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't have much more to say, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, go check me out on Twitter. Find me on Goodreads or Letterboxd where I write reviews that are probably more coherent than the one you just heard right now. And uh, check me out on Discord. I'm on there. You can come talk to me. Uh, talk to my friends on there. Feel free to join. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.